Hi guys, and welcome back to my art life. For today, I'll be coloring one of my original characters. Her name is Lala from Magical Musical. I'll be using Crayola crayons to complete this artwork. I've been binge coloring with crayons lately and will be doing this for the whole of August and September. I'll be posting new crayon art every Saturday so don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you'll be notified every time I post a new video. With that being said, let's move on to our main topic for today, which is a guide to non-artists. This will be a big help if you have artist friends or colleagues. This topic is not widely discussed as artists normally wouldn't say anything if ever you did something you shouldn't. So listen up, because this will be good to know. Let's start. First up is about an artist's sketchbook or drawing journal. Did you know that artists have a thing about flipping the pages the correct way? When your artist friend lets you take a look at their art pads or drawings, it is a sign that they trust you. So in return, always take extra care when viewing their drawing pads or art journals. Flip the pages carefully making sure that you're not crumpling the pages as you go. Because sometimes we tend to forget that your artist friend has put a lot of time and effort in making these artworks. Each artwork is one of a kind and has been hand drawn. Maybe if what you're looking at is just a copy or a print out of the originals, then it wouldn't matter. But if it's the originals, then keeping it in pristine condition is very important for artists, as this not only serve as their portfolio of their skills and artistry, but more importantly, their life's work, especially if your artist friend does art professionally. If ever their art pad is not bound by a spring-type binder, keep in mind to not flip it all the way to the back as this would not only damage the pages, but also may rip the binding in the center of the pages. To err on the side of caution, just open it like how you would handle a hardbound book, no matter what type of art pad your friend has. As proud as they are to show you their work, I'm sure they would definitely appreciate it to see you take extra care in flipping the pages of their art pad. Next on our list has something to do with respecting your artist friend's work. And that would be to ask permission first. If you want to take a look at someone's drawing pad, always ask for permission first. Some artists don't like others touching their drawing pads, or for others to see their artwork especially if it's still a work in progress. And again, this is because they put a lot of time and effort in making these artworks so it is very personal and precious to them. Another thing is, don't get upset or offended if they refuse to show their artworks to you, it's nothing personal, they probably are just protecting their artworks, or it's not ready to be viewed by others yet. It may also be because someone has mishandled and ruined their artworks in the past, so they are just trying to prevent it from happening again. The best way to go about it is to just ask them to show it to you without the expectation that they will oblige, and never snatch their drawing pads or take it without their permission. Think of it as a diary that is very personal and private. Next, is nitpicking, or making comments while an artist works on his drawing. Please note that artworks don't come out beautifully in an instant. It may not even look right while it's still in progress. That's also the reason why artists came up with the phrase trust the process. Because even they, themselves, would sometimes second-guess the outcome of their work midway, especially if it's not looking like how they initially imagined it. Sometimes, an artist would stop working and start packing their things if they notice that someone is watching. This is normal, so don't get offended if this happens. Artists, especially those who are just starting out, are very private, are critical of themselves, to the extent that they sometimes feel insecure, and afraid that someone would nitpick on their art because it's not good enough. If you really want to see their artworks, just ask them if it's okay for them to show it to you, or if they are currently working, just watch in silence and try not to make any comments especially negative ones. Comments and constructive criticism is okay at times, but it can get annoying and unappreciated, especially if they didn't ask for it, or if it's coming from a non-artist person. Note that doing art is the same with any type of learning. It goes through certain stages. Some gets it right away, and for some, there can be a learning curve, and may take some time. Artists are not born with godlike talents on the get-go. It's their interest and passion for the arts that make them good artists. Each and every artist still have to practice a lot and draw frequently to get really good at what they do. Next thing to keep in mind if you have an artist friend, is the phrase, no touching. If your artist friend lets you take a look at their artworks, it's a big deal, that means they trust you a lot. So make sure to keep yourself from touching the artwork to avoid ruining it. 
This is because sometimes, our hands will have dirt or oils that can transfer to the surface, thus, ruining the artwork. If the artwork is drawn with graphite pencils or charcoal, note that these are delicate works of art, especially if they have not been sprayed with fixative yet. Artworks made with pencils, pastels, and especially charcoal would stick to your fingers and smudge all around the surface which would be near impossible to fix. It would be devastating for an artist to have hours and hours of hard work ruined in a matter of seconds. So make sure that when handling artworks or art pads, hold it by the back side or edges and never make contact or touch the surface. Resist the urge to touch and run your fingers through. Next is, be respectful when requesting for art. Respect is a general rule of thumb in interacting with anyone, so, respect your artist friend's decision if they would not be able to make free artwork for you, or if they refuse for whatever reason. Remember that art takes a lot of time and effort to make. Some artists make art as a living or for extra income, and most likely they would have paying clients on cue. So most of the time, they won't be able to accommodate art requests especially if the person requesting free art wants to have it ASAP. There are also other things to consider like how complex the artwork is and the art materials used to make it. So don't get upset or angry if your artist friend refuses. I'm sure that if they have the time, they would oblige. Now for the next point, is a very common misconception of artists. So with that, I'd say, your artist friend, is not, a one-stop shop. Yup, that's true. Most people don't know it, but, your artist friend cannot do it all. It's very common that people think artists can draw anything with lightning speed. So it's very common that a person would ask an artist to draw a portrait of them on the spot. Like most professions, artists have certain specializations too. Every artist has a unique art style and orientation, not to mention the art form that they are into. Some are geared towards illustration, some are into graphic designs and digital art, and then there's portraiture, hyperrealism, mixed media, and the list goes on. There will be cases that an artist can do multiple types of art forms and art styles, but never all. So if you have just learned that a person can do art, it's best not to jump into conclusions and start asking them to make a caricature of you. Most likely the won't anyways, as artists don't normally bring their art materials with them all the time. It'll be more proper to just ask them what kind of art do they do or what mediums or art materials do they work with. I'm sure you'll get a very enthusiastic answer every time, and you get a plus point for showing interest in their craft. Next up is, never ask for their art materials. I think this is a good point to add here as most non-artist folks do not understand how precious an art material is to an artist. Some may even think that artist-grade art materials are just the same as the ones that their elementary kids use in art class. You have to understand that these art materials is an extension of an artist's creativity, and it took them a while to build up a collection. Art materials can also be costly and expensive, depending on the grade and quality. Here are a few samples of some of the most annoying and triggering comments that was said to me, and I'm pretty sure most artists would agree as well. First up, is a comment from a colleague in the office, and it goes. My child paints with watercolors too. She's nine and is really good at it. I bet she would really like it if she can have those. Next, is a comment from someone I just met. He's a friend of a friend, and claims he's an artist too. He saw my drawing pencils in my bag, and says to me. Wow. You have a lot of drawing pencils don't you? I'd like this one, and this one, and that one too. You can always just buy some again, right? And the last one, is from the office again. Someone from another department approached me and said. Hey, you're that artist guy right? I know your teammate, and she told me you're an artsy person. I'm sure you have paints and art stuff. We'll need that to make the decorations for the office event this weekend. Can you bring them tomorrow? There are lots more. So much that a whole video won't be enough if we are to go over them all, so let's end that here. Anyways, if you'd really like to have art materials too, the right way to go about it, is ask. Not ask for them to give you their art materials, but rather, ask them details about the art material, how much it costs, and where you can buy them. You can even ask your artist friend for recommendations for more affordable starter kits or tips on how to use them. I'm sure they'll be more than happy to help, and even appreciate your enthusiasm for the arts. For the last tip of the day, is something not only applicable to your artist friend, but to everyone. And that would be to show appreciation. 
So if your artist friend agreed and makes art for you for free, make sure to give back and show appreciation. A simple thank you is okay, but also consider compensating the time and effort it took to make what you requested by buying them a cup of coffee, or treat them for lunch, or even a small token of appreciation. By far, the best token of appreciation I received was a couple of $1 drawing pencils. I know it may sound odd and may even raise eyebrows. For some, it's just pencils, and it's not even expensive at that, but it sure made me really happy. Because although these are just cheap drawing pencils, it can do amazing things. I can make new artworks with them. Please note that almost all awesome artworks, even by masters, start with pencils. Alrighty. Those are all that I have for now, and I hope you enjoyed our topic for the day and you have learned something new. By the way, have you done some of the things I mentioned? If you have, what happened? How did your artist friend react? Please let me know and leave a comment below. If you're an artist or an artsy person, have you encountered these situations before? How did you deal with it and what did you do? Also, if there are other things that I missed, please feel free to comment. It will be a big help for other artists and non-artists alike. Thank you so much for watching, and please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet, as it would be a great help for this channel. It would let me continue to create more art content for you. So it may be a simple click on the subscribe button for you, but it would mean a lot to me. Have a great day, and I'll see you on the next one.